our Earth's surface is constantly changing. Not just the landforms, but the man-made structures also change. Look at these pictures of old denuded statues. Do you think that these statues were always like this? Of course not. These statues were not like this when they were built. Over the years, these statues have been denuded by atmospheric conditions and climatic factors which have denuded the minute details of these statues and they have converted into a huge mass of clay and sand. Now just like these statues, the rocks present on the earth's surface are also attacked by atmospheric conditions and they are denuded. Now when the rocks are attacked by atmospheric conditions, the color and texture of rocks changes. That is, there is a change in the chemical composition of rocks. And this type of chemical transformation in rocks is called chemical weathering. If you remember, I have discussed earlier that chemical weathering is very similar to chemical change. Now look at this picture. This picture depicts a chemical change where a paper turns into ashes due to a chemical reaction. Now look at this picture. In this picture, we can see holes in the rocks. Now these holes are present on the rock surface because the minerals present in the rocks have chemically reacted with atmospheric conditions like rain water and they have been washed away leaving the holes in the rocks. So the color and texture of these rock represent that these rock have undergone a chemical transformation and this type of transformation is called chemical weathering. So in today's video, we will discuss about chemical weathering in details. So what is chemical weathering? Chemical weathering refers to the disintegration of rocks by chemical reaction. Now chemical reaction takes place between the minerals present in the rocks and atmospheric conditions like rain water. So when the chemical composition of rocks changes due to atmospheric conditions, the rocks become weak and they disintegrate. And this process of weathering is known as chemical weathering. So therefore, unlike physical weathering, chemical weathering not only means disintegration or breaking down of rocks, but it also involves a change in chemical composition of the rocks. So we just read that in chemical weathering, the chemical composition of the rocks changes due to atmospheric condition. Now the most important atmospheric condition that plays a vital role in chemical weathering is water. Now here water may include rainwater or surface water like rivers. Now why water is an important factor here? This is because water is considered as a universal solvent which dissolves most of the substances in it. Therefore, most of the minerals present in the rock get dissolved in water and leave holes in the rocks or the chemical composition of the rocks changes when they react with atmospheric conditions like water. So, we see that water is a key factor behind chemical weathering. So I just mentioned that water plays an important role in chemical weathering. Now where on the earth water is found in abundance? Water is found in abundance in hot and humid places like equatorial regions. See in this map we can see the equatorial region of the world. So this belt across the equator or zero degree is the equatorial region. Now the rocks present in the equatorial region are vulnerable to chemical weathering. And why so? Because this region is very hot and humid and therefore the availability of water is very high in this region. So equatorial region is very prone to chemical weathering. So we just understood the meaning of chemical weathering and the characteristics of chemical weathering. Like water plays an important role in chemical weathering and therefore equatorial region is very prone to chemical weathering. Now chemical weathering is of different types. Let's learn about them. You must have noticed that iron objects like latches, gates, fences, etc. rust on being exposed to moist air. 
Now due to rusting these iron objects become weak and they need to be get repaired. Similarly, the rocks present on the earth's surface also get rust on being exposed to moist air. Let's see how. Now look at this picture of a rock. In this picture we can see a reddish tinge in the rock. Or in other words, we can say that this rock has rusted similar to the iron objects. Now, just like the iron objects, this rock is also rich in iron. Or iron is a mineral which is present in this rock in abundance. Now, the iron present in this rock reacts with the oxygen present in air and forms ferric oxide. Now, ferric oxide is a red colored compound. So, due to the deposition of ferric oxide or the red colored compound on the surface of these rocks, this rock has acquired a reddish color. Now, just like the iron objects, this rock has also become weak due to rusting and soon it will wither away. So, this form of chemical weathering is called oxidation. So, what is oxidation? Oxidation is a type of chemical weathering where rocks rich in iron reacts with oxygen present in air and wither away. So, since the iron present in this rock reacts with the oxygen present in air, so this rock becomes weak and it wears off with time. Now, oxidation is common in iron-rich rocks like hematite and magnetite. So, since hematite and magnetite are rich in iron, therefore, it is subjected to a type of weathering that is oxidation. Now, oxidation is common in tropical regions. And why oxidation is common in tropical region? This is because the iron present in the rocks reacts with the oxygen present in the air and not just any air but moisture and the humidity or the moisture of the air is high in these tropical regions. Therefore, oxidation is very common in tropical regions. Now, look at this map. This map shows the tropical regions of the world. See, the tropical regions are located across both the tropics that is Tropic of Cancer in the Northern Hemisphere and Tropic of Capricorn in the Southern Hemisphere. So, these regions marked by yellow represents the tropical regions of the world and the rocks present in these tropical regions are subjected to oxidation. Caves are large mysterious holes present on the earth's surface. The most common type of cave is limestone cave. Do you know these caves are formed naturally on the earth's surface? Let's see how. We know rainwater plays an important role in chemical weathering. The rainwater reacts with the carbon dioxide present in air and they form carbonic acid. Now, this carbonic acid further reacts with the limestone present in the rocks and forms calcium carbonate. Now, calcium carbonate is a chemical compound which is highly soluble in water. So, when rainwater falls on these rocks, the calcium carbonate thus forms, gets mixed with the rainwater and thus leaves grooves or holes on the rock surface. And now, when these holes become large enough, they form caves. So, this process in which the rocks rich in limestone wears off has got a special name. And the name of this process is carbonation. So, carbonation is the process in which rainwater mixes with the atmospheric carbon dioxide and form carbonic acid. And this carbonic acid further reacts with the limestone present in these rocks and forms calcium carbonate. Now, calcium carbonate is a chemical substance that is highly soluble in water. And therefore, the calcium carbonate gets mixed with the rainwater and thus leaves holes or grooves on the rock surface. 
So eventually these rocks become weak and they wear off and this process in which the rocks wear off is called carbonation. Now carbonation is a type of chemical weathering. Carbonation is very common in equatorial regions. Why so? Because in equatorial regions, limestone rocks are found in abundance. So therefore, carbonation is most common in equatorial regions where limestone rocks are found in abundance. Now in this map, we can see the equatorial regions of the world. Just see that the region across the equator is the equatorial region and in this place carbonation which is a type of chemical weathering is very common. So now let us answer this question. Identify the region where carbonation is common. Is it polar region, desert, temperate region or equatorial region? Well, I just mentioned that carbonation is very common in equatorial region. So the correct answer is equatorial region. Now let us proceed with our lesson. Now let us perform an activity. Take salt, sugar and sand and add them in three separate glasses. What will you see? You will find that sand does not mix with water while salt and sugar mixes with water. Why so? This is because sand is not soluble in water while salt and sugar are soluble in water. Similarly, there are some minerals present in rocks that are soluble in water. They get mixed with water which leads to weathering of rocks. I just mentioned that there are some minerals that are soluble in water. One such mineral is calcite. Now calcite is a type of mineral that is found in limestone. This calcite is easily dissolved by carbonic acid present in rainwater. So when the calcite present in limestone gets dissolved in carbonic acid, they leave grooves or holes on the rock surface. And when these holes become large enough, they lead to the formation of solution caves. So the process in which soluble minerals reacts with acidic rainwater and leads to the disintegration of rocks is known as solution. Now solution is a type of chemical weathering. So solution is the process in which soluble minerals gets dissolved in water which leads to the disintegration of rocks. Now addition of mineral acids like carbonic acid increases the solubility of rainwater. So when rainwater rich in mineral acids like carbonic acid falls on the rocks which are rich in calcite, the calcite which is a soluble mineral gets dissolved in the rainwater and forms holes or caves. So this process in which the rocks wears off is called solution and solution is a type of chemical weathering. Have you ever noticed ore beads or water beads grow in size on absorbing water? Just see how the water beads grow into bouncy fluffy balls on absorbing water. Similar to the water beads, there are some minerals present on the earth's surface that expand in volume on absorbing water. One such mineral is feldspar. This mineral expands in volume on absorbing water. And not just this mineral expand in volume, but it also forms a clay crystalline mineral called kaolin. Since Feldspar forms a clay crystalline mineral on absorbing water. So therefore these rocks become very weak and vulnerable to further weathering. So we see that some minerals present in the rocks expands in volume on absorbing water which makes the rocks weaker. Now this process of weathering is called hydration. So hydration is a type of chemical weathering in which the rocks expand on absorbing water and they transform into a loose clay mass. For instance, rocks like feldspar 
expands in volume on absorbing water and they form clay crystalline mineral. The formation of these mineral makes the rock weaker and it leads to further disintegration of rocks. So hydration is the process in which the rocks expand in volume on absorbing water and they form a clay mineral which leads to further disintegration of the rocks. So in today's video, we discussed about different types of chemical weathering. The first type is oxidation. Oxidation is the process in which rocks rich in iron reacts with the oxygen present in the air which leads to further disintegration of the rocks. Another type of chemical weathering is hydration. We just read that hydration is the process in which rocks absorb water and they expand in volume and forms a clay mineral. The formation of this mineral makes the rock weak and leads to weathering of rock. The next type is carbonation. Carbonation is a type of chemical weathering that is common in rocks rich in limestone. In this process, the rainwater reacts with carbon dioxide and forms carbonic acid. This carbonic acid causes the rocks to become weak and leads to disintegration of rocks. The final type of chemical weathering that we have read about is solution. Solution is the process in which the soluble minerals present in the rocks reacts with rainwater and leads to disintegration of rocks. So these are the different types of chemical weathering. So in today's video we have understood the meaning of chemical weathering. And then we have discussed about different types of chemical weathering like oxidation, hydration, carbonation and solution. In my previous video, I have already discussed about physical weathering and its types. The first type is block disintegration, granular disintegration, exfoliation, frost action and finally wind action. In my next video, I will be discussing in details about biological weathering. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too. So register for free now.